Tuesday, getting through it, powering through together. I do want to ask you before we get started, what is the most clutch shot or, or sporting throw or something that you've made off the field? Like, for example, I'll, gi- I'll give you one. Like, not obviously like game-winning hit or game-winning three-pointer, like not in an organized game, but the girl I dated in college played soccer. And they, they, it was this picnic thing that they had on the soccer field. It was like a like a charity event to raise money, right? Like a drive. <clears throat> and there's like these, these picnic blankets set up and they'd made food and stuff. And it was on the soccer field. So there was a goal. It's probably 20 yards out. And they were messing around with the soccer ball, her and her teammates. And I stopped playing soccer when I was like eight years old. So I, like I've not remotely tried to kick a, a ball and aim it. And I was like, I'm going to go top shelf right corner, just running up like Jonah Hill from Superbad and kicking the ball. And when I tell you guys, I don't, like the stars aligned, like, and I hit this ball like right off the right part of my foot and hit an absolute missile from like 25 yards out in the top right corner of this goal, like I had been doing it my whole life. Shouldn't have quit. Oh, no, I, I, well, that's too much running. Like I, it's too much running. I mean, it's like, it's like track and field or it's like cross country. Man, I say trying to do conditioning the whole time. That was the worst part of practice. <laughs> and like the whole part of practice. I never is played soccer. Well, you'd have been a good goalie. Never played soccer. You'd have been a good goalie. Now I did I kick the it. ball and hit Ava in the head yesterday. But that's well, look, that's building character. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's building character. It's being a good father. Love that. What is yours? Like beer pong or something? No, I don't I don't know how to even answer that story. I don't have any cool like Yeah, you I do. played soccer when I was twenty nine. I don't have anything really. Wow. I just do it in like actually, you know, like real games. Well, I'm saying a lot of people do stuff outside of sports. Like I watched this guy hit this incredible shot at this carnival the other day. I, I don't tried know how that. he made you it. You went to the carnival? No, I actually saw it on TikTok. I haven't been to the carnival. I don't, I don't trust carnival rides. I don't trust Six Flags. There's more it's to hard, the David, it's than hard for me rides. to get in a plane. Oh, the carnival's about funnel cake. That's yeah. all it is. And yeah. corn dogs. And well, look, I'll sit on the, I'll, whatever walking around the carnival on the grounds I'll do. Like I'll throw the dart at the balloon. Right, I'll do that little jackhammer thing where you hit it and you see how high it goes. I'm not getting on the the, tur- the tilt a wheel or whatever it is that 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 Ricky put together while he was drunk. Ah, uh, he buzzed. Bu- he was buzzed. Well, they say that's when he does his best work. Is cotton candy mid? Speaking yes, it's terrible. No, it's, it's, really a te- good. it's a terrible flavor. It's a terrible. F- cotton was meant to. Maybe go we'll in find out. Clothes. Maybe we'll find out Friday. Mm, we'll see. That's, that's a good tease there. Caitlin Clark leads Iowa past LSU for a trip to the women's final four. Former NFL Pro Bowler Vontae Davis is found dead at his home in Florida. And NCAA President Charlie Baker calls for a ban on all college prop bets ever of all time. I'm Jay Crane, and welcome to Crane & Company. The NCAA wants to abolish prop bets from being accessible to college games. And if you don't know what a prop bet is, it's basically a wager that does not relate to the final score. For example, it's like the over-under on interceptions that are going to be thrown during a game or how many yards someone will rack up. Now, Charlie Baker's reasoning, the president of the NCAA, says that it will lower the pressure and the amount of illegal gambling by players. And on the surface, that may sound right and his intentions may be good. I always doubt the NCAA when it comes to that. But the truth is, people are going to try and skirt the system either way. Now, by eliminating prop bets, you're not going to eliminate the cheaters. You're just going to make them go through a more narrow door. The cheating will not stop. And eliminating options is not the best way to go about trying to stop anything. What you do is make the punishment or deterrent so severe that the potential offender just decides not to do it. The same reason why criminals go back out and offend when they just get let right out of prison after they get arrested. It's because the consequence doesn't outweigh the benefit of getting away with it. And just like crime, you're never gonna stop all criminals, but the same thing with betting. You're not gonna stop all players unless you make that consequence detrimental enough. That's how you make a dent. Now, the scariest part of this whole betting situation is what happens if one of the biggest stars in the sport gets caught, like we've seen in Major League Baseball. Now, it's alleged, 
with the Shohei Otani situation that he might have known something or he might not. It may have just been his interpreter. But he isn't even getting investigated. And there's no interpreters in college football. Sorry, they just don't exist. Now, that, to be honest with you, is my biggest worry. So don't take away choices from the table and from the people. Just make the consequences very, very harsh. David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, going to bring him in on this. My brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. And David, I actually think Charlie Baker's trying to do the right thing here. I think what he's looking around and saying is, well, you look in the NBA, you look at the NFL, most of these, you know, and I'm not even talking about college baseball in Alabama, most of these people that have gotten caught, players using third parties when they can have effects on game games have been on the prop bet side. But by eliminating that, you're not going to eliminate the problem. To me, you keep everything and you make the consequence so harsh, you'll never play again. And if you get caught in college, you won't play professionally. And I think there obviously needs to be jail time to a certain level for people even outside of the arena that are playing the sports. I just don't think by eliminating prop bets, you're going to just totally take this huge dent out of people that are that are gambling illegally. Just like when you, you're in a state that you can't gamble in. You're going to find a way to do it. Everybody knows everybody does it. I just, I think there's a better way to go about this. Well, I'm all for increasing punishments when there's wrongdoing, but I really have no problem with this in principle, maybe just because it's already not legal in Tennessee, so I haven't gotten to partake in the college <laughs> prop taste it. during the season, so that hasn't helped me win any months. Um, but this makes complete sense coming from Charlie Baker. I, I don't think it's going to have any effect. I don't think the NCAA or Charlie Baker is going to sway any state on whether or not they decide to make prop bets illegal or to keep them from becoming legal. But it may makes sense that he would do this for either one of two reasons. Either he's coming out and advocating this publicly because he understands, hey, the NCAA just cannot be the regulatory body of every single player in every single sport. It's just too many. I mean, you just look at the NFL, what, there's 32 teams and you have, what, a 65-man roster? Even that's hard enough to keep up with who's placing bets and where they're placing bets. It'd be impossible for one body to regulate the entire NCAA with these athletes. But the second part of it, and I think the reason he's probably coming out and saying this now is this is a move to reinforce that the NCAA uh, is uh, to, to reinforce the amateur status of college athletes, basically. If he comes out and says this now, it helps them when they have NIL discussions or discussions on the transfer portal to say, see, we have made every attempt to define college athletes as amateurs, even when it came to college prop bets. I think this is more to do with the NIL legislation that he's going to have to fight against. Yeah, and and again, I it in theory, I don't think it's crazy. And if it's some sort of just vessel to to send a message, I get that as well. And that's something that you need to do when you're in that position of of quote unquote power. My only thing is the players aren't allowed to gamble on their own games anyway. You know, so so in reality, you're really punishing just the the common man who bets on games. Some I I know just like you know, there's some people that only bet prop bets. So if you eliminate that from the whole college sphere, yes, we don't want players to gamble on their own games. Like that that's obvious. N nobody wants that 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 has a good hand in in the bucket. But I feel like by again eliminating it, you're really just punishing everybody else that that is doing it the right way. You know, and I don't like comparing it to guns or war or anything like that, but it's just, to me, it's like saying, well, guys, uh, this is a gun-free zone, so therefore there'll never be any gun violence or anything here. That's typically where most of the gun violence happens. Yeah. So I, I just, I feel like there's a better way to go about it. I, I feel like Charlie, I kind of agree with both of you. I feel like Charlie's going, coming from a good place, um, but yeah, for no reason should you be taking money out of my pocket not being a, allowed to bet props on college kids. Um, I agree that the, the punishment should be severe in every way. Um, I don't think you should be able to play again. And I know it goes on right now, and I know sports are entertainment. People say it's a competition. I get that. And there's a lot more dirty tricks that go on in sports that we don't know of. But don't punish the fans. Don't punish the people. And why do you think a lot of ratings are up in sports in general? Oh, sports gambling. It's sure. sports gambling. All right. So, Charlie, you're going to do this. It's going to hurt a lot of your ratings uh, when it comes to college football. A lot of people just watch the NFL. They don't watch college. And if they do watch college, they just watch college to bet. So you're taking eyes away from your game, and you're taking money out of people's pockets. So I don't think it's the right route. I mean, is there— Well, is remember, there, he doesn't have the authority to do it. For he's sure. He's advocating. He's advocating. No, I get that. So, and he's not the only so one. when it comes to, like, a state governor— are you fine with the state governor making that call? Or just, you just, hey, leave the markets as open as possible in all cases? I'm, I always lean towards just free market as, as much as possible. I just, 
if we're gonna go about a way of putting guardrails on this thing, I just I, I'm a way more deterrent. But like I just and I think you agree with me in, in most aspects of that. What 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 I find interesting is with the NCAA trying to reinforce like amateur status, at this point aren't you just wasting your time? A little bit. Like are not you isn't there other battles like the NCAA probably mm. should need to be fighting? I, I know you want to fight Again, on a lot of Again, If Congress fronts. gets involved, like we've heard Ted Cruz and Senator yeah. Tommy Tupperville say, like if Congress gets involved, then the NCAA at least wants all their ducks in a row to be like, hey, look at all of these different fronts we've been fighting on to preserve the amateur status of sports. Kind of like we, what we talked about with Clemson and Florida State the other day suing the ACC. Maybe the vote against allowing Stanford and Cal into the conference had less to do with them coming. In, but more to do with saying, hey, see, we voted to not change the conference in a material way, and then it happened. That means we get to you leave. You did something, something we like that. To do. Yeah, and I, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, just We want to know what you think. The phone line is going to open 715 a.m. Central. Uh, going to get to the chat here in one second. But what do you think? Should prop bets be banned? It's an interesting, it's a very interesting conversation. I, I find it to be somewhat of a slippery slope, but it's not the only thing that you're hearing about nowadays, and something that's way better to hear with, it's Raycon. Raycon are headphones that are anything but ordinary, sleek, comfortable, and designed for the ultimate audio experience, experience, experience. They're not just a tool. They're a mood enhancer and a companion that transforms anything we use them for. And here is why we're super duper obsessed with them. Because they they have optimized gel tips, number one, all right? Especially if you run and listen to things, this helps out, keeps it in your ear and keeps it comfortable. Gives you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. That's more than R2-D2 R2-D2 and C-3PO combined. And they're priced just right. They're not going to run you out of the mortgage payment trying to buy earbuds like other places, which y'all know exactly who we're talking about. The product is even better, and the price is even cheaper. Whether you, you're going to pump it at the gym, Blaine, oh, 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 oh. sweat on, yeah. all right, getting the be- to, to be the best version of yourself, all right, and they stay securely in place. Again, that's a low-key thing, but a lot of people are feeling me on this, yeah. especially if you're running around the neighborhood getting after it, all right, trying to impress the neighbors. Jack and Tan, that's how we live our life. So for premium audio at the perfect price point, David, you've got to go with Raycon. Your thoughts quickly. Love it. I can hear everything. He hears everything. He just heard what you just did. All right, we won't tell anybody, though. So right now, go to buyraycon.com slash booster to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's B U I. R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash booster to get 20% off and free shipping. That's by Raycon.com slash booster. Makes a great birthday present too. Easy, breezy. Not going to finish the rest of the cover girl reference, but you're feeling me on that. And also, we're headed to Gainesville, Florida this week to go scream at Billy Napier. Oh, no, sorry. Wrong event. We're heading to Gainesville, Florida to go celebrate our Lady Ballers event on April 4th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. If you still haven't seen the Lady Ballers, Ballers trailer, here it is. Let's run it quickly. That's Blaine in a pink wrestling suit. Oh. Slap, jump. Guys, this is serious. Sports can be your pathway to a better life. Well, like yours. Are you gonna move? I am not. Yeah. Oh, if you can beat them. Coach. Alex. We, we could, could play, play basketball. basketball. We'd have to get the whole team back together. Ooh, We're in. I'm in. I'm in. Join them. This is the way the world is now. My eight-year-old daughter told me all about it. A guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all. That's called gender fluid. So I can be a woman <laughs> on the court and a man in the bedroom. I can't believe it. Nice. You mean when you're <laughs> sleeping? Yes. It's time. <laughs> I'm with her. <laughs> it's it's the the it's it's my my like a girl. We could dominate every woman's sport. Running, swimming, soccer. I said sport, Felix. Lady Ballers, streaming exclusively on Daily Wire Plus. Man, I can't believe they'll make that movie. Uh, If you're in the area, please come join us as we continue to fight for women's sports. You can find the RSVP link in our socials and in the show description. It's important that everybody gets together. Speaking about fighting on all fronts. Uh, and if you watched the game last night, you know, the high-level women's basketball game that we saw last night, we got to make sure we're not letting dudes get in there. I mean, let's just be on how are we even arguing yeah. this? How's this even an argument? We got a bunch of important stuff going on. I don't know who's more delusional. The people that are actually do this, which we saw a man win a weightlifting contest and some huge dude hurdler go, go get banned from a, a, a track and field event because he's just going to work everybody. Do we have that dude? Do we have that dude here, the Vicky Piper dude? Who's oh, on the weightlifting? Vicky. Vicky Piper. 
I there mean, he is. That's the weightlifting one, right? The, yeah, one of the weightlifting, which this like, is just the one the powerlifting. And it's like, it's like, because like, I, I already did that. That is true. I already did that. That is true. All right, am and I you lying? Did it gracefully, huh? you're, you're a butterfly. There we go. A there he is. Right I already there. did that. You're a butterfly flying against the wind, David. My outfit was better, wind, David. My fits were better. And I'm super proud of you. All right, let's get to the Booster Club. All right, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate, I will read it if it's on topic. If not, I will catch it at the end of the show. We're going to start off with Corey Deshaun. Corey, what is up? So if I was a player and I knew I wasn't going to the NBA or something professional, I'd just get rich off my own prop bets. Let's be honest, though. Well, it's here's so this is an interesting. Si, let's say this situation pops up. Let's say I'm a player. Let's say I'm a, a bench player. I'm just gonna for Monmouth. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Not don't know anybody from Monmouth. Any other place existed until they made that run the NCAA tournament a couple years ago, and they had the bench mob, which was awesome. Let's say I don't play that much. Or, even if I do play, I've watched film on who we're playing all week. And I tell my buddy, hey, I think we're going to be able to lock these guys up on defense. If it was me, I would take the under. After what I've seen on film, and, and we've played him once before, if he makes the bet, as long as, as what, what if that player gets a cut of the under hitting, like in that game? Is it, do you consider that cheating? Not saying, hey... If the under's not going to hit, well, I'm, I'm going to miss shots on purpose. But, like, wh wh where's the line? Is it if you take any money at all for any bet that that involved, you know, yeah. your game you yeah. played you in? Yeah, you should never play again. You should never. So so if I say, hey, I would take the under. If, if Blaine came up to me and said, hey, man, I'm betting. And let's say I'm not even getting any of the Oh, well, that's money. different. I mean, is it, is, is that totally percent? different? But is that still considered cheating, though? Because I feel like if they caught you giving out information, even if you didn't take a cut, they would kick you off the team. Yeah, probably. But if you're getting a cut of any of the wagers, like you should never play for any team or play in college athletics again. I, or it's like, or inside, it's I like insider trading that. to me. I don't yeah, disagree with that. I mean, and what's the, I mean. What's, you have a vested interest. Yeah. In that. And what's the punishment for that? Because that, uh, it should be, it's in the Depends same Depends on what business you're in. If you're a it's politician. It's in the same realm, no in my opinion. You're basically doing insider Yeah, are, are you a senator or, or not? Yeah, are you a senator or do you just like work at Wendy's? <laughs> All right, let's go to Josh Bissett. Josh, what is up? It says the NCAA is a joke. They can't even properly keep track of their own tournament. What happened with that court being wrong yesterday? Yeah. We expect to believe Charlie Baker on this. Well, look, a, a lot of big organizations, and I don't even think this is virtue signaling. I, I don't think that's a good way to put it. I think he actually believes this. I, I think this is this is half of what David was saying is, you know, they want to try and inf enhance the amateur status. We're against, you know, the the player becoming the employee, I just, I find it so, I find it a, a fine line to walk because every other commercial I see during the college game is a DraftKings commercial or something like that. Like, sports gambling is is making, and you could say maybe not the NCAA, but they're making oodles and oodles of money and it's helping out ratings, which is getting people paid, which at the end of the day, how much do you rock the, rock the apple cart? So, look, I don't think the NCAA is wrong for coming out and taking a position on this. I don't think they're wrong on the position they're taking in theory. But I think in execution, if you were really trying to take a dent out of it, you've got to make the deterrent so bad that people are afraid to walk in and rob the bank. And maybe they will. I mean, we saw with Iowa and Iowa State last year, like those rosters were completely gutted. And the NCAA is a little different than the NFL. The NFL is actually partnering with. Yeah, the that's companies. true. The NCAA that's hasn't. The NFL's making so money much. off. Them. Look, they're they're probably they're getting plenty of money. They're getting money indirectly from ESPN, who is then allowing the commercials yeah. to air on those uh, for the during the games. But I would be kind of disappointed if that wasn't the NCAA stance. After you've tried to keep college athletes yeah. from getting paid, your stance would have to be. Yeah, this, these are amateurs. Let's don't have prop bets. The, the second that Charlie Baker would come out and say, like, yeah, we advocate for free markets when it comes to betting for our college athletes. Why have you been keeping people from getting their NIL? Yeah, I'd be like, when did you start getting paid for that? And then on the flip side of that, too, is now that the kids are getting paid to play college sports, they really don't have a leg to stand on in terms of advocating for the prop bets not to be in place. Yeah, no, that doesn't make sense. I was going to 46 was a fix. So it says, has NIL made college sports worse? I don't think the on-the-field products have been bad at all. I think the on-the-field products is as good as it's ever been. I, I, again, I think the worry is that you, you, especially NIL mixed with the transfer portal, I will continue to say I think the transfer portal is more dangerous than NIL. I, I really believe it, to the essence of the game. 
right? Because again, if a kid goes and people, like we said, people get paid for a long time. Kid goes somewhere and sponsored by a, the biggest car dealership in, in the town, the small, let's say in Oxford, you know, nobody's going to get mad about that. Now, if the kid goes to Oxford for two years as a really good player and then leaves to go somewhere else, they're going to be a lot more pissed about that and you lose that attachment, right? That, that localism, that feel of, hey man, you know, we may not be one of these big metropolitan cities, but this is kind of what we thrive on. This is our thing. This is our way of life. And you just kind of spit in its face. I think that's, because again, the professional game, which it should, right, feels a lot more corporate than what the college game is because, you know, the college game's in smaller places, right? And, and I think that elicits a different, not saying one passion is better than the other, but I think it is a, just a different type of passion, if that makes sense. And the lack of transparency in NIL hurts more than just that. For sure. So. And having no guardrails. I mean, it's just a bad plan, if we're going to be honest. All right, let's go to Alan Adams. Alan, what is up? Says, player betting means there is a potential for throwing games yep. and shaving points. Does anybody remember the Chicago Black Sox? Does that story ring? I remember yep. it. Yeah, I was there. Shoeless what, Joe. 106 years ago or something? Yeah. Uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. And listen, nobody wants, I, nobody up here, I don't think anybody at the NCAA is advocating for people to, to be betting on the games they're playing in. Nobody wants that. But let's be honest. You think this is just going to stop it? Like all of a sudden people are just going to be like, oh, guess we can't do it anymore. Guess all the illegal betting is going to stop. There's ways to go about trying to limit it. It's just like crime. You're never going to stop it fully, right? You'll have some idiots who will just do it regardless. But I think if you sit here and say, listen, we'll do the investigation. If it is found that you benefited financially or you help people make decisions based on games that you were playing, not only are you banned from playing any college sports again, which what governing body do you do that through in the future? Is that through the NCAA? Is that through some, through some breakaway civilization that we have in college football? And then the NCAA hands is everything else. Not only that, but you're going to be blackballed from the professional leagues as well. Like I, I, Not that people still won't do it. People will do it and they'll keep doing it, right? But I think that would just scare the hell out of people enough where you do actually have a dent in people that are willing to go through with it. I just, again, you're a lot less likely to rob a house where you know the owner has a gun than walking into a house where you know they have a knife and you have a gun. It just, that's just the nature of, of the human condition. All right, let's move on here. Caitlin Clark, David. Caitlin Clark, man, got revenge against LSU and Angel Reese last night. When I turned it on, she had multiple turnovers and missed a free throw, wasn't making field goals, and Angel Reese was dominating the game. And it looked to me like LSU was better than Iowa at every position other than Caitlin Clark. So I just thought that's the way that it was going to go. And then in the second half, Caitlin Clark just went on a tear. I thought she'd need 40 for Iowa to win. She ended with 41, and Iowa beat LSU by seven. Yeah, I got revenge. Uh, you know, I remember LSU, I believe, beat Iowa for the national championship last year. I don't think women's college basketball gets better than better than that. It was really good. Than, than last night. And South Carolina is the best team, I think. And they didn't play last night. But you had two elite matchups with stars in the women's game. Like I tweeted out, there's some damn good ball being played right now in this LSU Iowa game. And someone on social media was like, good ball, man. This is so hard to watch. I'd rather watch a men's division three game. Well, I'm not comparing it to the yeah. men's game because that's unfair because men aren't women and women aren't men. I didn't turn on the LSU-Iowa game expecting to see UConn, the UConn men, yeah. <laughs> playing Illinois. Like, I know what I'm watching. But in that realm, that is the highest level of women's college from shot making, right? And there were some sloppy moments. There were sloppy moments, in, uh, sloppy moments in every game. You had the star power. You had big shots. I mean, it was 45-45 at the end of the first half. And then you have USC-UConn, which ended up being a hell of a game. Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins. Last night, I was entertained watching that. Entertained. I was yeah. entertained watching it. Now— Because things were even. Yeah. It, let's be honest. If there was an, a regular season game on in the men's between two teams that could have been unranked, I probably would have watched both, right? I probably would have flipped back and forth. If there had been a big game on in the men's, I'm watching the men's game. But that doesn't take away from the fact that that was a very, very high quality played game last night with people making big shots. And it was a fun watch. That's all you can ask. That's why it's paramount for things to remain even. Mm -hmm. Keep women in the women's game, not put men in the women's game. Because both sides being somewhat even is what led to the entertainment. Like the person who, who 
messaged you or whatever and said, last night's play was so sloppy and I'd rather watch Division Three. Of course there was sloppy play. There was terribly sloppy play for a lot of that game, just as there is when you go watch your 10-year-old play flag football. But if both sides are even and they're all 10 years old and one side is not playing a That's professional team, point. the game can be yeah. extremely entertaining even with bad play. Yeah, I think I'm just celebrating that it's women playing basketball. I think Kaitlyn Clark should be celebrated as one of the best women to ever dribble a basketball. And yeah. is it... Are you delusional if you think Caitlin Clark can play in the NBA? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's yes, just you are. stupid. And, but and, and it's just physics. It's science. I mean, everyone would tower over her in the NBA. Did I? I'm going to be honest with a lot of people. Did I watch that game yesterday? No, I didn't. All right, but I'm not sitting here hating on the women's game. And hell, the more I watch Caitlin Clark, the more I think she could probably kick my ass in basketball. You know, uh, to be <laughs> not honest, one on one. Uh, probably not one. It depends if there's a ref there or not. This is Demarcus Cousins. But I do think at this point, you can't turn on a women's game just to watch it and say how bad it is compared to the men's game. We're past that. We need to celebrate keeping things separate. We need to celebrate women playing women basketball, just like we celebrate men playing men, men basketball. Don't hold women to the same standard as men because it's different when it comes to the sport of basketball. Yeah, well, it's and, and I think the best way to go about it is outside of obviously just looking at it through the lens of this is a men's game, this is a women's game. It's just called how you see it. If the game sucked, Say it sucked. Yeah. It, on the men's side, if it sucked, say it. There's been plenty of bad games I've watched on the men's side. That Grand Canyon, Alabama game was like, well, like watching two people throw a beach ball at a garage door. Like it just, it, it was, it was tough sometimes. But if the game's great, say the game's great. Like just call it even. Like I'm not going to go to a JV middle school game and expect to see the Baltimore Ravens show up. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, it's not realistic. So that mindset and that that worldview to me, it's it's just warped. But I tell you, I was I was very entertained and. And look, you know, you 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 know, people will be talking about the press conferences and you know the white versus black Iowa versus LSU thing to me. I just really don't understand. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's I feel like it's that's just people. Just so people are out. bored. People are bored. Yeah, you know. But I, Kim Mulkey is a great coach. I mean, Angel Reese had a dominant performance there. Even hurt Flage Johnson, what's, Camelot, what's Flage Star. She's such a good basketball player, man. What's up with the LSU walking off during the national anthem? I think they. they I don't think they've ever been out during the national anthem. I didn't catch I, Kim it. Kim Mulkey. I didn't catch the game from the. Kim beginning. Mulkey said that they have a routine they do while the anthem's playing. Which I, they're in, I believe they stay, they, they don't stay in the locker room because they don't want to be out there for the national anthem. Listen, if you've kept up with anything Kim Mulkey said, yeah. this is the last person that's gonna have her team kneel for the national anthem, or they're not gonna come out. True. Teams have routines. I've been on teams where we're out there for the national anthem. I've been on teams where we're waiting in the hallway or, or whatever while the anthem's being played with our hand over our heart. I've been on some teams where we're in the locker room because that's just a different part of the pregame routine. I think as long as you're not disrespecting the flagger, it's isn't a Gabe Kapler situation. You know, yeah. it's like, we're not coming out because this country sucks even though I'm rich and I get to do whatever I want. I'm Gabe Kapler. Like, it's, it's, that's not what this was. I feel like, again, this is just another way for people... <laughs> Kim Mulkey would be the first person to ever get a hit piece thrown out in the Washington Post and be accused of being unpatriotic. <laughs> in the same in week. In the same week. <laughs> that's never happened before. That's on a bingo card that, that doesn't exist. Um, one last comment here that I didn't realize because I've only watched two of Caitlin Clark's games and everybody knows she's a phenomenal shooter. I didn't realize she was such a good passer. And she broke the Dude, look at her NCAA assists. tournament for assists. Yeah. But her get-ahead passes from, from half court are really incredible. I, that's good, what's going to make her a great pro as well. Now, I agree with that 100%. I think everybody sees the long shots and they ooh and ah, which is, I get it. That's the most exciting part. But she made some passes, especially on backdoor cuts last night. Even times where I thought, stop passing it. Like, yeah. LSU, it. LSU has an advantage of over every other position on your team except for you. Go ahead and take those shots. But uh, anyway, let's move on to Vontae Davis. Vontae Man. Davis, who I played against when he was a corner at Illinois, uh, drafted by the Dolphins, played for the Colts, played for the Bills. He was found dead at his home in Florida. Sounds like no foul play is expected right now, but it's still under investment. Yeah, it's, I think it's 90 days. Um, it takes, they said, before they'll have more information. 35 years old. His brother's Vernon Davis, the tight end. Mm -hmm. It was a really good player as well. Um, if you you know if, if you remember, he retired basically at halftime of a game. Yeah, that, I, I'd forgotten that. Yeah, That's and and me. again, he'd already had a great career. I mean, he's a Pro Bowler, like we said. This is just, uh, you know, whenever this happens, and and a young person dies in general, but especially a young person's 35 years old, which I'm gonna be 35 this year. You know, that played in the NFL, you start wondering, you know, head injuries, you know, CT and stuff like that. But we just don't have enough information right now, other than uh, it's just awful. 
They say no foul play, like you said, is is thought to be involved, which I mean, I guess that's kind of a silver lining. I don't know. It just depends on on you know which way you're you're looking at it. But uh, just a sad story, man. Just really sad. Yeah, great player, great player. Gone too soon. For sure. I had forgotten about him retiring at halftime. Yeah, you guys remember that? I remember I a little bit of it. Um, because I remember he came out and was like, you know, I didn't want to disrespect, meant no disrespect to my teammates or the organization, but he was like, I was just out there. He was like, I just felt like it was time. Like, I want to get out of the thing. middle of the game. Just like at halftime. It's like, hey, uh, you want your Gatorade and your Snickers? He's like, man, I quit. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> oh, man. Rest in peace, though. Yeah. Same. All right. Uh, Houston Astros pitcher, uh, Ronel Blanco. Yeah, how about In this? the span of seven days, had a new daughter, made his first opening day roster, and threw a no hitter against the Blue Jays yesterday. Retire. <laughs> yeah, done. it's you need to quit now. What a week. Yeah, you need to quit now. Well, it'll it's never get better here. than this. Yeah, like it'll never get better than this. I'm just Which so is glad you didn't do it against the Yankees. Look, sometimes you hit that. Yeah. Thank that, you. Sometimes you hit that hundred thousand dollars scratch off. You know, when you're younger, right? Yeah. Probably will never happen again. So I mean, at this point, you're playing with house money, bud. You're playing with house money. So we'll see how long it. But there were some. You know, some uh, interesting scores yesterday. Did you hit both your Nerfies yesterday? What do you think? Yeah, you hit both of them? You did hit both of them? You love to see it. What'd you go yesterday? Well, yeah, I hit both my show bets, but someone told me to bet a third Nerfie. So we were 7-1 yesterday. Yeah, I think we were 7-1 yesterday. Uh, Crane and Co. Pick Striker hit both of his. He he picked Ipswich to win it. Really? In soccer, like plus money, and they won. He always has the wildest bets. He does. Um, He there's going to be a gopher that runs across a, a lake in Michigan. On Thursday. Hey, as long as you get Plus it right. 470. Yeah. Just no prop bets. Plus 600. There goes that gopher runner. All right. Lake well, runner. that's a heck of a day for the boys yesterday. Definitely. Man. Definitely. All right. We got the phone lines opening up here in a minute. We got Chris Marler from the fourth. Is he ever going to wear a hat? No. Nah, we'll see. Too many people so out here not honoring dude. their bets. I'll tell you what. No, he, look, Chris will. Chris will. All right. Look, let's be honest with each other. Facing the IRS, IRS without a professional. Woo. Call it's me. Not a smart move. I have a pro. Best believe. Blaine Crane. They're coming. Numbers and stuff. All right. And if you owe back taxes, you have unfiled returns, it can weigh on your mind. All right. Especially when the IRS has become more determined than ever. Those guys are pissed. I'm just waiting for Will Farrell to show up. My house. Yeah, that's all the guys back. reference. Face back. Their chief data and analytics officer revealed the IRS is focused on an average on an enforcement project with an average return on investments of about six dollars for every one dollar spent. They're targeting individuals and businesses that currently owe back taxes or haven't filed their tax returns. But don't worry. Ba, 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 ba. There's a hero that's coming to save you, David. Hero and it's not David us. Michigan. It's I Tax Network hero. USA, the nation's leading tax relief firm. They know the tax code and they'll fight for you. With a record of negotiating over $1 billion. That's a silly billy for those counting at home. And tax relief for their clients. Their team is knowledgeable in handling any type of tax issue. Basically, they're the UConn men's they're UConn men's basketball team right now. Billions and billions. Just dominating. So don't face the IRS without professional help. Contact Tax Network USA for the best strategic advice to help reduce or even eliminate your tax debt debt. Debt. All right, I got this. Uh, Death has an H in it. Call today. You read? Call today. 1-800-245-6000. Or visit their website at tnusa.com slash booster. They'll give you a free private com- consultation and how you can settle your tax debt today. That's tnusa.com slash booster. Get, get it together. That's your alternative. Yes. Okay. Get it together, man. All right, after we get Chris in here, then we're going to get to the phone lines. I want some interesting calls today. I want a lot of friendship, a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm. But first, let's go over to the bearded boy. All right, let's go to MM, a.k.a. Malcolm. Martin, Malcolm, what's up? He says, let's be honest, guys. Women's Elite Eight was more entertaining than the men's Elite Eight. I'm sorry I have to be the one to say it. See, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. But, I I mean, I think you can make a lot. There's actually a logical path to make that argument. More interesting interesting than the second half of the UConn-Illinois game. Or was it? 30-0 run? I I was not interested when I took Illinois eight and a half because Adam high-fived Blaine. He did. So now it's my son's fault. No, no, it's not Adam's fault. Well, now we know that maybe he doesn't know, so therefore we do know. So he Do we have a large enough sample hand, size, though? No, we have to, like, yeah, it's not, it's not even close to the same product. 
It's not. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying well, that. But it's it more entertaining. It doesn't have to be the same product to be entertaining. I can like watching a horror movie and watching a murder mystery, and, and they're both movies. Like, it's just, it is, if you go into it knowing what you're watching, I'm not gonna, expecting, like, man, I can't wait for Kaylin Clark to go dunk this one from the free throw line. Or I can't wait for this inbounds alley oop, right, in this LSU women's game. That's not what I'm looking for. But when it comes down to an entertaining game, that was about as entertaining as a women's basketball game is going to get. It's just the truth. I'm not saying is the most entertaining men's game versus the most entertaining women's game, which one's better? The men's to me. But that's not the argument because that was probably the best women's basketball game I can remember watching. It's like if you got to see John Elway play high school football against Lawrence Taylor and the rest of their teams aren't that good, but one of them lost the championship the year before to the other one. A a great storyline and narrative gets created. Two generational players are playing each other. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be entertaining. All right, let's go to, scroll down here, Amy. Oh, Amy, I'm going to get this last name wrong. Amy Carcaterra. That that sounds sounds right right to me. C-A-R-C-A-T-E-R-R-A? (laughs) C-A-R-C-A-T-E-R-R-A. God. Wizard. Carter. All right, Amy, Amy Cartier, our Cartier says LSU was in it good until Angel Reese got hit with that ankle. Then it kind of went downhill well, from there. That's how Part I felt. Of it. But I thought LSU actually was a deeper team than Iowa. Oh, yeah. I thought LSU had more weapons than Iowa. They just didn't have Weapon X. Now, I will say, like, Kalen's teammates were hitting shots, too. Like, they were hitting three, especially in the first half. Like, you know, LSU went on that run at the end, um, toward the end of the first half, and then Iowa came back. But, I mean, the supporting cast was hitting some threes, too. All right, let's go to O. Danny, girls. Just to be clear, LSU football does not go out for the anthem either. It's just not what our teams do. Yeah. Stop trying to make it into something now three I agree. years later. How about you just get your ass out there for the national anthem? Well, it's How about it, that? Uh, uh, How about we go put our hand over our heart and support our country on the field in front I, of everybody where they can I see it? I don't think they're not supporting the country. Like you. So if I sit in the locker room and put my hand over my heart, which a lot of teams do, or if I sit in there and say a prayer— and then, then we go out, I, just like a boy from the Steelers was talking about, he would go wait in that alleyway while they're doing the National Anthem, put his hand over his heart. The, nobody's taking a knee. Listen, if this, was, if this was like Columbia, and they were all out there taking a knee or holding up like, you know, political signs, that's a totally different thing. Like, this just, LSU is not unpatriotic. Like, this is the wrong battle. This is... You are going at the wrong side on this. Like, you don't, that doesn't make you. I less get what patriotic. you're saying, but I don't like it. Mm. Oh, that, well, that, yeah, there you go. If you were matter, the coach, right? you go intent about it your way. It has to matter. Yeah. If they don't have an intent to disrespect the country, then it can't be treated the same way like the Gabe Kapler situation was. It's just not a good look. I'd like the to know how far out. on, and you're walking off the court. Yeah, that's true. I didn't see it. I don't know. I, I didn't watch the beginning of the game. How far out was the national anthem? Being played was well. It was. It was. I was like holding hands when it started. And LSU was going back to the locker room. Like typically, the way it works is ball don't know. lie. I guess. Yeah. Uh, now, it look, now it doesn't ball hurt don't that lie. much. To be honest. <laughs> well, it hurts that much. It, it, again, I just don't think there was intent there. I don't think there was intent to disrespect the flag. But speaking about intent to disrespect, this guy's not afraid to disrespect anybody. But what is that? But oh, is that a L- is that, that a Michigan hat? hat? No, no, no. Is no. that Chris, got Chris every Marler, fourth and wrong podcast? Wait, is that wear. LSU or Auburn old school? Because they both use that one. That's that's LSU. It's, it's an LSU old school hat because it's, it's just a it's a good hat. It's not read too. You know what? Just like the anthem, let's not read too much into it, guys. That I don't was, know. Well, I'm reading into no, you not wearing the hat. You're, you're supposed showing up with wearing. an LSU hat you on. Cannot, that's what I'm. Who thinking. are you? Don't give me 12 hours. I just need you know what? I just need to buy the hat. It's been four months. I just need to buy the hat. Also, okay, so listen, I thought you were on the way to making a good point, Jake, but then I was I was very wrong. When you said if this was Columbia, this would not be a big deal with LSU and the anthem. And and if it was any other school almost, it would not be a big deal. But since it's LSU and we have decided they are villains and we hate them for whatever reason, and I think I understand a lot of the reason why America hates them, but I'm not gonna say that part out loud. That that whole thing yesterday was like that wasn't a big deal. Like and also I will say this. There's been some really good basketball games, like like all season for women's basketball. I would I would I would think the men's Elite Eight was probably still more exciting, but that matchup we had last night was like that that felt like all of like the one versus two type things that we've seen yeah. 
in, in all of his sports. That was that was really fun for most <laughs> of the night. That was peak. Like that was that was yeah. uh, again. I don't think it gets better than that in the women's game. Knowing what knowing what you're going in there for. But Chris, let's go ahead and talk about it. Congrats, yeah, Alabama's in the talking. final four. You know, Alabama's in the final four. Mm-hmm. I guess it's kind of cool. I, I do want to ask you this, though, because I, I thought it was an interesting discussion. Yesterday. I don't know if it was on part of my take or somewhere. They asked, would you as an Alabama fan trade a co- one of the college football national championships? I'm not talking about the one y'all won during like World War II when everybody else is off fighting the Germans. I'm talking about the, the ones, the one like what, one of the 30 y'all won under Nick Saban. Would you trade one of those for a basketball national championship? Would you just swap it? And why, why do you say that? The 1941 National Championship, which is absolute garbage. They should get rid of that flag immediately in Brian Denny. But Bama is not the one that won during World War II. That was actually Georgia who won in 1942. Didn't Army win one year, too? Year. Didn't Army yeah. win in, like, 43, which makes – I'm like, God, they've no done, done a lot of winning. Yeah. If anybody's no. going to win it, that's who I'd have gave it to. So, I, you know, it's, a, it's tough. I, I hate that question so much. We actually talked about this on the most recent Fourth and Wrong podcast. Um, it's out now. Go check it out after this show. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it's it, like I hate this question because it, it like not to be an elitist or arrogant or whatever. But like, just go win all the games. Just go win in all the sports. Like, like I I hate having to do this weird. Would you give up this to get this in in like your fandom? Because what it ends up being more than anything, guys, is at least for Alabama fans, and I don't care how this sounds, it becomes a Twitter clout chasing. Who's the best fan? with what I can say, like, like agenda. That's all, that's, all, that's all the question is. But if you're asking me, listen, like I would, if you, if you ask me this in September, it's a much different answer because it's, it's, it's college football season, mm-hmm. but I will say now getting to a final four for the first time and, and seeing how exciting this is, I, I would, I would take a, probably a six and six season. I, I would, this fall, they played Georgia, LSU, Tennessee, and Auburn. I would take a loss in all four of those games if they win the national championship. Yeah, I, wow, well, I, 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 I think it's something that it's like we're not used to. Like even getting to the final right. four. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. After a while, making the NCAA tournament, I was like, it's house money. Wait, like, so hold on. You mm-hmm. would take a loss this next football season to who if Alabama wins the national championship? Georgia, Tennessee. Uh, so Georgia, Tennessee, LSU, and and Auburn. Wow. Kalen DeBoer won't make it out of the year one. Like, <laughs> no, but that's fine. They'll, they'll put him in that wooden owl and but set that, him on fire. That like, basketball in that same shift forever. In the wicker man. No, like the sure. basketball one. To me, that's like, listen. I'd be like, hey, we're, we're, we're known for ribs. Like, we're a restaurant that's known for ribs. God, here we Everybody go. loves our ribs. Oh, here but we, we just won yeah. best dessert in the United States. Well, we just went to France. Like, it's something different, man. We, we can hang our hat on something different. That See, we got to yeah. bring the French stuff back in here. I don't get it, but like. Yeah, no, well, seriously. But Chris, Real we quick. grew up we grew up and basketball was bad. It was bad for most of the time. Y'all had Antoine Petway. I remember those runs. I remember Cliff Ellis before it How all all you? fell apart, right? Uh, dude, I was wiping up sweat under the the basketball going Chris Porter was jamming on uh uh on LSU. But then it was awful for a while. Like Alabama yeah. hasn't been it ain't been like this. Let's be honest, no. like consistently like this. So, no. I feel like it is something that's kind of it's kind of new and fun, man. I mean, it's kind of like not a midlife crisis situation, but I, look, did I, I buy the Porsche? Maybe. The better question, I think, might be for other fans instead of Bama fans, because the team that's affected most by this is Auburn. They're like the fan base for is sure. the meltdown the most about this is Auburn. And, for sure. You know, I don't even know if you should count this Final Four run. Bama didn't even have to play Yale, which is tough. Like, like if they would have had to play Yale and go through that gauntlet of a 13 seed, I, maybe yeah. you give them more credit than they than they deserve, but. Um, man, I'll tell you what, like, <laughs> that's what you should ask. You should ask Auburn fans, what would you give up in order for Bama oh. not to win? Because I like, think I'll, that's the they thing. Don't have well, I'm not going to give up. To a guy wearing an LSU hat is an Alabama well, fan. Well, no, no, no. Here's the thing. We're not going <laughs> to worry about sports. I don't know. Yeah. This is a great <clears> we're not, we're, we're not, we're not going to worry about it because you'll have to play the Globinauts <laughs> in UConn. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, which it's basketball. I tell you what. Who the hell I, knows? I can't, yeah. <laughs> but no, you know, Chris, you're right. Auburn's one up on Alabama. Auburn's one up on Alabama was we've been to a Final Four very recently in basketball, right. and now now Auburn's got nothing. Like I love equestrian. My wife, <laughs> she's it's great. It's very very important. But mm-hmm. bas- baseball right now, no. Look the way I think Bama's ranked like 13th. Auburn's like one and eight in the SEC. Basketball, it's even Stevens at best. I mean Nate Oates has done more in the NCAA tournament. Let's be honest than what Auburn has done. Since 2019, 
and more in the regular season, we're going to be honest as well, than in football. Be, yeah. I mean, good God. I mean, it's, t- it's tough on these streets. It's t- I, but, I, hey, I honestly, hey, we love Auburn, though, right? It's, it's, it's okay. I'm not okay. You're not okay, but it's okay. I got grilled, Chris, for just saying play better in the postseason. That's, that's all awesome. I said. And you have, like, this 10% of the Auburn fan base who's like, don't you ever say anything bad about Auburn because it's <laughs> Auburn. I want to yeah. win, man. I want to win. Is that so bad? Like every now and then. I think that the, there's a – this is a very real – I don't think it's 10%. I think it's way higher. It's probably more, it's probably more Chris. It's real, probably more. There's a very real section of the Auburn fan base that I, – I honestly believe this. I think that they would rather subconsciously lose games mm-hmm. in big moments if it means they can still hang their hat on the whole, we're a better fan base than you. We, it means more to us. It's just different down there. We're mm. Auburn. We believe in Auburn. We love it. You say a damn creed. Like, well, like both. You can this? do both. You can do both. Like, you, you can do both. You can do both. Yeah. It's fine. I can love Auburn and get pissed when we can't get past the round of 32. Or when we right. go to Omaha, we can't throw the ball to first base. Or in football, we can't stop fourth and goal from the 31. And like I said, I had coaches Auburn reached out pissed to me for right. critiquing them. Like, it's holier than thou. Please don't critique us because remember when Simeon Bowers was dribbling the ball off the court? Yeah, I do. And the standard's been raised, but I, I feel like that's right. poison. That's a po- those are poisonous thoughts. And if Maybe Nick God Saban's digress. dominant run at Alabama mm-hmm. has taught us anything, it's that winning in a dominant fashion is not going to weaken the fandom no. at all. It'll right. be quite the opposite. No. Uh, yeah. the enro- I'll love you harder. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll love you harder. <laughs> I do want to ask about uh, Alabama and Auburn, uh, but one thought that, um, based on what you said when you came in, I didn't know anything about this national anthem until Blaine asked it yeah. uh, earlier in the show because I didn't catch the very beginning of the Iowa-LSU game. Uh, I disagree, though, that it was made into some deal just because it was LSU. I think this is just the aftermath of what happened after Colin Kaepernick, when we saw Gabe Kapler, the Giants right. manager, everything that's happened with the national anthem, people are more sensitive. And if they saw the Iowa team walking out and and maybe thought that that was disrespectful, I think you would have had the same situation. Do you disagree? I, I So I think that if there's been 35 games played for LSU this year, mm-hmm. like I, I saw one guy, I forgot who it was, but uh, like on Twitter, of course, and it was like, I don't even want to hear the other side of this. Like, this is disgraceful, blah, blah, blah. And, like, all the comments are like, they've done this every single game. So maybe, mm. I'll tell you what, maybe if the media who's covering women's sports, which is, it's awesome that it's getting this massive platform and it's so great we get to see all this, but maybe if the media does a better job of covering college sports, like Holly Rowe, instead of having instead of having her go to, to Albany just to fangirl over one player, and then we just cover the sport objectively like we do men's, mm. then maybe... We won't see this every time. So like, I, I think it's a missed, missed opportunity because like, so many eyeballs were on this specific game. And it was something they did all year. Yeah. And you guys all played sports, except for Blaine, I don't think, because he's <laughs> not an athlete. Um, yeah. I'm kidding, Blaine. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, that's what I, I know. If you are doing something <laughs> and you're winning, you're continuing to do that one thing. So this is a pregame routine. Like, listen, like yeah. I was no more Garcia Parr in the box like, like an a-hole. Like, I, I just had the same thing. Every single time. And so if this is something they're doing beforehand, I understand where it's coming from. But at the same time, you have to be completely ignorant if you're LSU to not think it's going to draw criticism because of, of all the things that surround that program. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, again, I, I think the precedent was set, though, that, that they don't come out. So that's, it's hard for me yeah. to get upset at them. I, I do believe this, Chris. I think LSU is built to actually embrace the villain role about as good as anybody. Like, just with, with not saying that there's bad people or anything like that, but there's just something. Going to LSU games, like going to Mordor, yeah. all right? It's just you're down there in the swamp, and there's, we're eating meat and soup together, and people are drinking at 6.30 in the morning. And you're getting flipped off by eight-year-old kids. Sometimes you've got to become Harvey right. Dent. And I feel like LSU is the perfect place, the perfect place where – it's so much fun for them to be hated because, number one, of the, the confidence that LSU has as a brand. It is a white-hot brand when they get going. I don't know. I think some places are, can embrace that villain role. and Like, it's hard for Texas A&M to be the villain to me. 
You see no, what I'm saying? You don't see thinks they are. The LSU you don't, you don't is don't want to be the villain for that. being anti-American, though. Well, that's not. I don't no, think that's not. Go down to Louisiana and find like the, LSU. The, the brand LSU doesn't need that. Yeah. No. No. I'm not saying right, that. I'm talking fair. about like the 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 kind of the Angel Reese, the the arrogance, the kind of cachet. It's almost hard for me to explain. It just it fits LSU, right? You go back and think about some of those LSU football teams. I mean, with Glenn Dorsey and Honey Badger and all them, like they they weren't they weren't the the choir boys rolling up, you know, to sing, yeah. you know, Hallelujah. Yeah, but they also that's weren't beautiful. like kneeling for the national anthem. Like those are completely. What? No, no, that's not what. Like, I, that's not what I'm saying. saying. This field. This team, just this team was. I know, but I'm saying that yeah. that's the narrative that he's talking about, well, embracing the villain. No, 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 no. That's Dave, not what I mean. Oh, I, maybe well. I didn't explain it well enough. But Dave makes a good point too, because it's like, and this kind of goes back to what you're saying. Like, I, I don't think it was a big deal because they've done it all season, and as like an athlete, you sit there and think like. Okay, you have a routine. You're going to go through a routine every single time. My dog Pepper says, "Hey," but it, at the same time, like LSU has to be smarter, and Kim Mulkey has to be smarter, and all those girls have to be smarter than to think like, surely this is going to be something. If you're on this big of a stage, like not not going out for the national anthem, it's not like it was just going to be ignored. You know what I mean? Like they have to be, they have to know that that was there's going to have a lot of pushback on that. Mm. Yeah, go ahead, Blaine. Oh uh, yeah, I was going to just get to. Donnie 37 says, first of all, Chris, roll tide. And second of all, okay. how the hell do we beat UConn? <laughs> <laughs> you need a shaman, God, a like, Bible, and a knife. Dude, every time they would win a game, it was like, awesome. They beat Grand Canyon. And it's like, oh, how the hell are they going to beat UNC? And then, you know, you get excited because you're going you're gonna to beat. Your, I, like, my bracket was so effed that I, I, like, I went to go. I, I hadn't looked at it. And I was like, oh, we're on the same side as UConn. That blows. Yeah. I tell you what, like. I don't know how you do it. UConn's on an incredible run. I think they've won every single tournament game in the last two years by double digits. We saw the 30-0 run. Like, it, it, just as Dave pointed out, it was insane. Um, they're really, really good. I think what they're going to try to do against Bama is probably try to run them off the three-point line and funnel everything inside where Bama's kind of weak there. They're going to need a big game from their bigs. Like, like Kringle cannot get into foul trouble early. And I, listen, the, the hat that I'm wearing, I, I said this on Twitter at 2 a.m. last night. That's where I'm at emotionally. Um, is that, <laughs> like what if Bama does 2021 LSU and like like in that game against LSU and hits 22 threes? Like, look, they're they are good enough to be lights out from three. I think that's the, that's the way they have to win this game. Like, you can't foul mm. out inside. You have to be, still be strong. Keep keep things at least even in there and not let it get away from you. Um, but listen, we saw the other team that's dominant in this Final Four is Purdue, right? Like like. They, are, they were the consensus number one team in the country, I think, before they lost to Illinois. So we saw Bama go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Purdue for basically 38 out of 40 minutes earlier this season. They, they can do this. It's just a matter of, of not letting the moment be too big. You know, I, I almost wonder, is it smarter for UConn? Obviously, you try and eliminate the other team's biggest strength, right? Which for Alabama is the three-point line. I just worry if Klingon and them are just out-rebounding the hell out of y'all down yeah. low, like that to me is is I feel like everybody's gonna talk about the threes and they should. I get that. But if Alabama just shoots threes well and doesn't do anything else well, they are going to lose by 20 points. Because UConn to me, I think, is the most complete mm -hmm. team and they don't have that, you know, thing from Pacific Rim at center like like Purdue does with Zach Eady. I gotta start watching movies that you reference because I just I try You haven't to seen Pacific Rim? No. You must have seen the other one. Like, I saw that like one. Robots or something? Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, like, Blank can explain it pretty, pretty We're good. not going to give away the plot. Yeah, it's a, yeah, don't yeah. give away the plot. Hey, yeah, I will it, tell your follower or your listeners, I finished One Tree Hill. I know that was a big deal with some of the listeners I last time I was on One here, Tree so Hill. I did finally finish that. And you're talking about me being athletic. One Tree Hill. You know, Hill. You know what the hardest part <laughs> about One Tree Yeah, you, you want to know what the hardest part about, you, you know what the hardest part about watching One Tree Hill is, Chris? Mm, what? <laughs> Telling your parents you're gay. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Chris is like, but I already did that yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I mean, what are you talking about? Bro? I'm just kidding. I was going to Nick Saban's bodyguard. There he Love is. Oh, he's in here? Love that. He says, is it time to give Nate Oates a lifetime contract? Uh oh. Give him an arena. So, did, so they just gave him a contract extension where he's a top five coach in, the, in, in college basketball. I do think that was such an underrated move by Greg Byrne because. Even if they lose, if they would have lost in early round or something like that, and they and you know they would have been chastised all over social media because they just gave him that extension. Mm -hmm. But like, 
it, Nate Oates is, would, would have been sought after. Like, I, I think if the Nate Oates domino was able to fall, and you talk about Coach Cal and the hot seat that he was kind of on at the end of the season, I, I think there's a lot of places that would have really, really pushed for him. Michigan might be one of them. Yeah, you I know, agree. Like Louisville, Indiana might have been I think, would have like pushed. I, there's a lot of places, places that I think he would have pushed for him hard. Can you imagine Nate Oates at Kentucky running that system mm. with those players? Hey, will Nate Oates be coaching at Alabama longer than Bruce Pearl coaches at Auburn? Well, that's a good one. Um, you, that's, I mean, I would think so because he's, I think he's younger, right? Like, Way that, younger. That is going to so be, he'd have to leave. That, yeah, that, that is, I think he'll stay for a long time. I really do. I, I, I tell you what, if they don't build him a new arena and get out of that airport hangar, maybe not. <laughs> um, but I, that, that has like all the feels of like a, a Woody versus Bo, like I'm not trying to say this in a, a discrediting way, so uh, this is supposed to be a compliment, David. But yeah, that has everything that, is. to me is like the ten year war type thing of like yeah. those two guys. They they like each other off the court. This is a really really good rivalry right now, um, and so I, I I I hope we get to see this for a long time. The, does too. he want to go to the NBA? Do you think Nate Oates is a guy that wants to eventually the coach question. in the NBA? I don't think so because and also it, it's not the same. You don't get the same type of like like. The disparity between going from college to the NBA versus going college to the NFL is much different. It, mm. Like it is not as strenuous of a job for college basketball coaches. So I, I, I think, honestly, I think he's thrived, man. If you you talk about, they have they replaced all three assistant coaches. They they lost the greatest player in program history after being a number one overall seed a year ago, and they are in the final four for the first time in program history. It, it just you cannot make enough out of what he's doing. What well, just- next question from the hotline? Yeah, if we're going to call a spade a spade, it seems to me that Nate Oates gets the most out of his guys in the biggest moments. That's yeah. true. Like, like it's, it may not be, he may not be the, and they've won a, a lot of success during the regular season. It just seems like when Bama has to have it, they come through. Have to hop on. Like, and it's just, and, and it's like not just in basketball. basketball. Like, it's, I mean, look at football. I mean, when they have You're to have it. You're basketball, baby. Yeah, straight I, women's national championships. Let's get it. And they they're on a roll. As far as they should have with Brandon Miller because he's one of the best college basketball players I've ever seen. But I feel like that yeah. had more to do with the the murder situation hanging over that team. I would take I honestly yeah. do. Am I crazy to say that I would rather have? In the, I'm talking about in college. I would rather have Mark Sears than Brandon Miller. Like, Mark is that is that good. really that? If you I'm think about it, both. Yeah, I know, right? What's better than? It's like my dad used to say. What's better than one lobster dinner? Four lobster dinners. All right, one more, and then we're going to get Chris on up out of here. Uh, let's go to VolFan3727. Says, okay. is it me, Chris, or does it seem like Zach Eady got every call in that Purdue-Tennessee game? It is very hard for me as a I, – listen, I always say this. I try to cover everything objectively and, and, and as best I can. As a lifelong Alabama fan, it takes a lot for me to cheer for Tennessee. But that – blank with Purdue on on Sunday it was awful like like <clears throat> listen I don't know enough about what's going on inside the paint every single every single play you could make maybe with Edie it's like the whole thing with holding like you call it on every play but they just don't but for him to have drawn 10 fouls through 30 minutes of play and not committed a single foul with how yeah. physical he is seems completely unreasonable yeah. and you know, I'm, I'm not sure if that's exactly how they lost, but I tell you what, it would have been Tennessee played well enough and Dalton Connect played well enough to where it, I wouldn't have minded seeing like they, they let Edie play with so much confidence throughout the games because he's never in foul trouble. He's just never in foul trouble. So he can do whatever he wants. And I, yeah. I think it, it greatly affects the outcome of every game he's in and kind of unfairly. Well, I, I don't want them to call the game different. Right. I don't want them to look at Zach and say, well, he's bigger than these other guys, so we're going to let the other team foul him and not call it as much. I just want them to call it the same on both ends. Yeah. If you're going to call fouls on Zach Eady, where Zach Eady's shooting free throws, well, you need to call it the same way on the other end. And I don't feel like Tennessee, and that there's many reasons why they lost, but I thought the way that game was officiated was very slanted stylistically toward exactly what Purdue wanted because it took all the pressure off of Purdue's guards who couldn't make a shot. Tennessee, outside of Dalton Connect, couldn't make a shot, but Purdue wasn't shooting very well from the three-point line either. But when Zach Eady, you know, scores 40 points and grabs 20 rebounds or whatever it is, and he's getting to the free throw line and the guards are able to drive and get fouled, drive and kick and get fouled, drive and get fouled, it kind of lends yeah, to exactly the, what Purdue wants to do. The other players from Purdue, 
that was more egregious than anything with with Edie. Like that, like the flopping and all that kind of crap. That was like, I thought that was way worse. I Engineering way school, worse. man. One thing that works yeah. in Purdue's favor is that Edie historically has been good with fouls. Like he hasn't mm-hmm. fouled out of a lot of games this season. Is something that he has improved on. And one thing that works against Tennessee is that. Well, you relied on one player and no one else scored in double yeah. figures. Yeah, like Zakai yeah, Ziegler. Ziegler, Ziegler would be a bad time to not have a big game there. Vescovi was sick, I know. Ganey yeah. hit a couple shots, but Meshack was in foul trouble. I was shocked that Jonas Adu struggled. Obviously, you're going to struggle against Zach Eady. I'm mean, right. like defending a redwood tree. But I thought he would present a problem because he was so athletic and long. Yeah. That's why the DJ Burns Zach Eady matchup to me is going to be fascinating because, yes, Zach Eady is taller and has longer reach than DJ Burns. But he ain't moving DJ Burns back no. into that. Like, he ain't backing him down like he was backing down a do. I mean, DJ Burns is over there kick-stepping, getting ready to block, you know, defensive ends the NFL coming off the edge. I don't think even Zach Eady can move him down low, which should be interesting. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'll tell you this, too. If, if for some reason Bama and NC State make the championship game, you guys are going to have to do that live stream, find a new producer, because me and Justine are going to the game in Phoenix. I'll just tell y'all you Y'all right should. Now. And y'all should stream <laughs> at each other. And I'll never hear that. You see our NC State ball? Yeah, we got NC State ball right Shout out to Brock. Yeah. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Brock. Go Pat. Appreciate it, Brock. Appreciate it, Broccoli. Well, Chris, tell everybody where they can find your great work, my friend. We got to get to these calls. Uh, we yeah, appreciate man. you hopping on. Yeah, of course. I appreciate it. Um, Blaine, I'm, you're very athletic. Okay. I love <laughs> you. So, uh, I love you. I can take it. Yeah, Chris. Circle back. Fourth and Wrong is the new podcast. It's out on all platforms, uh, <laughs> Apple, all that good stuff. And then um, my 18th new Twitter account in the last calendar year, Vern Funquist CFB. <laughs> what? On, I'm, I mean, it's the third one, but it's Vern Funquist CFB on Twitter and then Vern Funquist on Instagram. Yeah. Um, putting out a lot of content, like that stuff. So I appreciate you guys having me. I hope you all have a great day. Always. And I'm Thanks, the man. friend. See you, Christopher. See you, Chris. Appreciate it, buddy. Chris Marler, always good to have Chris join. I slouch right. when I sit, dude. Yeah, I do the same thing. We've been telling All right, 1 855 236 3228. We want to hear from you, uh, regardless of anything in the sports world. Let's get to the, to the Booster Club and then we'll get to calls. Oh, let's go to J Dubs. What's up, J Dubs? Can we please stop crying about the lack of foul calls against Zach Eady? He lays off more guys driving in the lane than any other big in college basketball. If you watch the games, you would know this. Mm, yeah. I mean, I've literally watched the games. I, I don't think anybody is. I don't think anybody's saying that Zach Eady didn't get fouled. I thought Zach Eady got fouled a lot. I mean, it's I, I'm not arguing that they they should have, have let it go more than what they did. What I'm saying is I thought Zach Eady fouled on the other end, and not just Zach Eady. I thought there were some fouls on Purdue that didn't get called. But at the end of the day, Purdue won that basketball game. Don't, don't get anything misconstrued. Tennessee did not play well outside of Dalton Connect. Like even if even if Zach Eady would have done the exact same thing he did. If Ziggler shows up, or Meshack shows up, or Adu shows up, or Josiah James shows up, Tennessee wins that game. But they didn't. It was dribble down, Dalton Connect come off a screen, I hope to God you make it or we get an offensive rebound. That's that's what that whole game was. I think most of the frustration for people uh, about Edie is just that he's seven foot four and he's imposing his will down. Well, I think it makes the game ugly to watch. Not to say that there couldn't have been more fouls called one way or another. I just, I think that's most of the frustration. Yeah, and I think it makes the game uglier to watch and people... That's not his fault. No, not at all. It's it's like a team that lines up like Michigan. You got a weapon, use your weapon. It's not my fault. I mean, no one's complaining for Tennessee when Dalton Connect pulls up and has one of the best jumpers I've ever seen and puts up 37. Like, that's a weapon too they use that for sure i was going to g hurt says the sec fans are in tears and i love it about zach Eady. big den been de- big ten has been dealing with that for two years welcome to the party three fellas. three, three years, i mean they haven't it? done anything in the ncaa tournament i mean this is the first year i mean that's that's why again we see zach Eady talking about you know this team this is what he came back for not that he was going to go super high in the draft anyway i'm very interested to see where he goes in the NBA and the way that his game translates to that level. That, that's what I'm interested to see because it's kind of an, it's obviously a very old school game. He's not a stretch guy. He's not out there shooting threes from the corner or what you see typically in the NBA. Uh, but no, I, I don't think it's, um, again, I, I don't think it's a hate Purdue thing. I, I, I really don't. I think it's just the style that Zach Eady plays some people don't like. Let's go to the King Darth Dave. He says, is there a distinction between prop bets like over slash unders versus the number of player injuries or players getting injected or streaker on the field. Well, that, I mean, those 
As far as players getting ejected, I don't think I've seen a prop bet with players getting I'm sure ejected. there's probably one for Draymond. But there's, but there's, yeah, there's prop bets for streakers. I mean, the prop bet, it's not just an over-under. I mean, it's like for the Super Bowl, there's one, you know, will a ball hit an upright on a field goal? I mean, there's tons of different prop bets in, in tons of different ways. All right, let's go to Zach Wilson. Zach, what's up? He says, I was just listen, uh, watching slash listening to Cheap Seats by Alabama. He says, Cone seriously looks like the lead singer, Randy Owen. You shaved his head, of course. Hold on, I'm on. I mean, David looks like every Randy human Owen. being on the planet. I look like me. I'm yeah, me. Figured out. All right, What's 1-8-5-5. it called? Cheap Seats? Yeah, Cheap Seats. Old Row was the name of the song? 1-855-236-3228. Get your calls in. I want to go to those. All right, let's go to War Eagle 329. What's up, my guy? I get to see some Auburn love in here. It says, Jake, I saw your comments and video on the Bruce Pearl, and I agree. If he has another outing where he loses first in March Madness, where do we go from here if you're well, I, it's Number one, I appreciate you hopping in. I'm not saying fire Bruce Pearl. Like, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, at some point, the standard's been raised at Auburn basketball, and they know this as well as anybody. I think that's why yeah, I got the calls I did and, and why people got upset. If I was totally wrong, I don't think people, you'd have had that reaction. It just would have been brushed off. What I think is happening, what the thing that I, that I think a lot of people are frustrated with is Auburn makes this run in 2019 to go to the Final Four, right? Then you have COVID the next year with that Isaac Okoro team, which is tough. You haven't been passed around at 32 cents. You know, Auburn had all this momentum in basketball, and now it's been caught up and surpassed, honestly, by Alabama. You can even say Bruce Pearl is probably the best thing to happen to Alabama basketball and a lot of other teams in the SEC. But at some point, you can't just live off 2019, right, and, and just regular seasons. And it's great to win in the regular season. It's not easy to win in the regular season. Nobody's saying that. But what has happened in the NCAA tournament, when you look at the way it's gone down, don't make it to the Sweet 16 with Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, two first-round guys. And if it's just a one-off, if it was Auburn had made the Sweet 16 a couple years in a row and they lost to Yale in the first round, it, it is what it is. But it's not a one-off. Auburn's got to start playing better in the NCAA tournament because, like it or not, and I think it's a good thing, Auburn is now judged on what they do in the NCAA tournament. I just think that's the truth. Yep. All right, I got a couple call-ins here if we want to get to them. Let's do it. All right, let's go to Jordan in Boise, Idaho. Jordan, what's going on? Hey, guys. How's it going? What's, what's up, up, Jordan? Um, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you, man. That. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Um, so I got into uh, baseball a couple years ago um, when the uh, Phillies went on their run to the World Series. Good for you. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, Jake. I'm not here. <laughs> All right, next caller. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I had a question. So going into uh, this season, it seems like everybody had our bullpen rated pretty highly. And maybe this is just the uh, Craig Kimbrell trauma coming through from last year, but I don't fully understand why we'd be so highly rated. Again, maybe it's just me was hoping you guys could shed some light, maybe. Well, I, look, when you look at, at, at who you guys have, I think there's obviously reason for optimism. My, my biggest question when it, when it comes down to it is, you know, injuries and health, right? When, when you play this 162-game season, obviously you got the all-star break in between. I, could you guys be a little bit overrated, right? But if, if you stay healthy, I do think the bullpen is good enough. And they've proved, you have guys that are proven in there. It's not like they're just a bunch of nobodies that, that nobody knows. I think it's hard. And look, as a Braves fan, like, <laughs> if anybody knows, uh, it's hard to trust the bullpen. Like, it's, it's hard. But mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot worse situations than you guys are in. My biggest thing is the health. Uh, but, but there's guys that are proven in there. I, I don't think that some reaching for the stars or trying to pull something out of your butt to make everybody feel better about certain things. It's just, just like everybody else right now, when you look at Major League Baseball, I think this is why you're seeing some of these contracts for pitchers go down is because these injuries are starting to mount up and mount up because, I mean, God, everybody's throwing a 93-mile-per-hour slider. Everybody's throwing a ton of innings and just specializing on baseball growing up, and, and you've kind of seen that permeate through. But 
I, I see reason for optimism. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be thinking, oh, it's an overrated situation. Not only a good bullpen, but ranked the best bullpen in Major League Baseball coming up to season. Preseason? Season. Yeah, preseason. Yeah, and ranked. that's probably a lot of it has to do with that from. Hoffman guy. Yeah. Um, who got drafted top 10. Oh, for sure. Hoffman, and like, was it his 10th year in the league? I saw them talking about this the other day. 10th or 9th year in the league, and he's come out and balled, balled out. And a lot of it has to do, it's a, it's a committee thing. Um, you have a wealth of options when it comes to closers. And um, three, y'all's war last year was extremely good. Talking um, about Jeff Hoffman? Jeff Hoffman, boom, that's it's it. He's 6'5", 235. 6'5", 235. Been in the league forever, is just now balling out. It was a top 10 draft pick. Yeah, well, and, and we know sometimes in baseball it takes time. But again, that's why I go back to what I said, the health, right? Sometimes baseball, and it's not nearly as physical, obviously, as football and some of these other sports. But when you play 162 regular season games, it is a true battle of attrition. It is a true battle of attrition. So it comes down to depth, right? And that's where, you know, everybody's, not everybody, but a lot of people are healthy coming into the season when these preseason ratings mm -hmm. rankings yeah. start, right? What happens when that one guy goes down? And we've seen the Braves, I think, have done a really good job of this, is when guys have gone down, whether it be in the bullpen or the starting rotation, they've been able to supplement other guys to get them through it. You look at Jesse Chavez and guys like that. You know, sometimes... That's just, that, that's what it takes. And, and I think you guys have that. Now, you know what I hope happens at the end, if we're going to be honest. But um, I don't want anybody to get hurt on the way to, on the way there. No, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I'm still pretty new at this. So I'm still trying to like fully understand all the, all the nuances. Um, There's a lot in that sport. Example, There's a lot of nuances. And oh, yeah, and we my, used to see starters oh go a lot deeper in the game. It's a so, different game. It's a and different that helps your bullpen out a yeah. lot. You don't see starters make it past the fifth. Well, you didn't have you didn't have four guys throwing a hundred either. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Like the the nuance I'm trying to understand right now is why we threw Connor Brogdon in last night, only to walk the bases load and give up that grand slam well, extras, but you, you, know, you know what they say literally. hindsight's always 2020 right and if i'm gonna get out the if, if we're gonna get it out we're gonna get the demons out let's get them out early well buddy season. we got 155 more of them yeah well, like i would season. rather i would rather start slow and you see the phillies do this right we see the phillies do mm -hmm. this they'll start slow and then just hang around and hang around and then figure it out it's not about if you get hot it's when you get hot so got 160 more of these. Things. Yeah, 160 more. But appreciate the call, brother. Great call, man. Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate yeah, it. those potatoes. Thank you guys. All right, let's go to Jake in Florida. Jake, what's up? Hey guys. So uh, Nate Oates is in the final four. Yep. And yep. It only further vindic it only further vindicates what I've been saying, which is Nate Oates is the best coach in the SEC at the moment. But it seems that Auburn fans are struggling with this. They're struggling bad. Because I can't yeah. even have conversations. Took away Christmas. I can't even have conversations with Auburn fans without them yelling at me. Like, why yeah. do you have to yell? Well, you know. Because <laughs> they're upset. Yeah. Why do you have to yell? We don't have anything anymore. Oh, why do you yeah, have, to have to yell? Oh. Uh, 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 say, my friend. Okay, no, look. I, again, look, Nate Oates stole. He's the Grinch. He stole Christmas from Auburn. What was that one thing Auburn could put? The one thing. And I'm not talking about love and friendship and all that other stuff, all right, which from there, y'all know I, I feel it. I'm in the trust tree. But like the one thing Auburn could point at right now and say, you know what? Yeah, y'all won all these with Nick Saban. Outside of the kick six, right? Greatest college football player ever. They'll be chasing friends. Yeah. But it, the one thing I could point yeah. at and say, we made the Final Four and you guys did it. So suck it. Now they can't. Now Auburn's got nothing to point at. Well, then it seemed like Nate Oates just brought the NBA to college. A little, the you mean like the Steph Curry shoot a Let's three? Let's shoot threes. Yeah. Barely play defense. Threes worth more than two. I, know I they've think been it playing. Hold year, on. Honestly. I know they've been playing a lot better defense when it comes to the tournament. I know that. But doesn't it seem like look, we're just going to shoot a lot of threes. We're going to run really fast, and that's what the NBA does. Well, it's N Nate Oates. Outside of this year, Nate Oates has pr pretty much had really good defenses. Like, one of the reasons that yeah. Alabama team made a run with Herb Jones and them, they were elite defense. Nate Oates wears, makes people wear a hard hat, like, after practice. He's teaching defense. I think he takes the best parts. I think he runs Tennessee-style offense, right, but is a defensive-minded guy, like, personality-wise, which I think is a great combination. 
And you, I think you have to say yeah. right now, when, when you lay it all out, now this past year, Lamont Paris was the coach of the year. Can we all agree with that at South Carolina? He was the SEC coach of the year this year in the regular season. I think we can all agree with yeah, that. Your team season, was picked to finish 14th. Yeah. I mean, you ended up doing what you were going to do, including beating Tennessee on the road. But if you look, I mean, take the past five years, Jake. I'm looking at the numbers off the top of my head. And this isn't to say anybody's doing awful, right, outside of Jerry Stackhouse and a couple other guys. But Nate Oates has won more. And now that he's gotten to a Final Four, has gone as far as any team in the SEC in the past f- five years with multiple SEC regular championships and multiple SEC right. tournament championships. How many Sweet 16s? Now three? Is it three yeah. or something like that? And yeah. then, I mean, and now Final Four. Who's who's well, doing better? Is, who's doing better? Well, I think this is also good for, for Auburn because, you know, we talked about your video that you posted uh, last week or the week before last. Yeah. I think this only uh, – this should push Auburn and the Auburn faithful to want to succeed more in the postseason. Well, I, I, I well, wonder. That's the problem. I think the best thing. I think like, the best thing for that is to see Alabama have success or have these success, and now it's like, okay, all right, now we really have to invest and pour our time and resources into trying to take the next step in the postseason. If you're relying on someone else's success to motivate, you're screwed from the jump. Yeah, I, like I think I you're think screwed from the jump. I think Auburn's problem, and again, Auburn has won, like. I'm not saying Auburn is is like Vanderbilt. That, that's not what I'm saying. But the minute that you start saying, you know what, it's okay that everybody else is doing this, and it's okay that we haven't had a lot of postseason success because, hey, we're winning regular season games, and, man, you know, we keep it close. Wow, we really keep it close with some of these teams. That If you're trying to compete with Alabama and Georgia as your two biggest rivals, you're dead. You're dead. What I hope it does, not that anybody's not working hard or not that anybody's gotten complacent. I because let's be honest, who puts who shows up more than the Auburn fans? I mean, look at look at Auburn's atmosphere yeah. at home. One of the best atmospheres in the in the world in college football. If you're gonna be honest and go to Neville, you got Jay Williams and saying it's the best home court advantage in college basketball, right? Plainsman Park. Right. I mean, nobody Auburn fans show up. Every single time. Every single time. And nobody's asking you to go out there and win every big game you play. Nobody's ever going to do that. Like, asking for perfection is ridiculous. But reaching for it and having accountability and saying this isn't good enough, yeah, we won the SEC tournament in basketball. That's great. I would rather be in the Sweet 16. Like, it's just at some point, right. you know, you can't sit here and just say, you know what, well, at least – at least we we all just can look each other in the eyes. You know, we'll go to Tumor's Corner and get some lemonade together, and it's all going to be good. Like, that's just – I love Tumor's Corner lemonade. I can love Tumor's Corner lemonade and want to make it pa- – and want to win in Omaha or, like, you know, play for an SEC title again this decade in football. Like, I, I can want that. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, really quick before I get off of here, I'm going to be at uh, UF Thursday. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Come on, baby. Hey, get with me. I don't know if I can say this on air, but get with me. Uh, beverages are on me. Mm. Mm. I'm going to hold you Bring some that, friends. Brother. Yeah, bring some. You can tell everybody. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun there. time. That was it's a cool really Yale joke time. you made Jake, earlier. Great. Do what? So that was a cool Yale joke you made earlier. That was a cool Yale joke. Well played, though. sir. That was pretty good. I usually that went right over my like head, that. Jake. Yeah. That went right over my head. And typically, that only planes do that. We appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. All Thanks, right, man. See you all right, Jay Bones. See you, buddy. See you Thursday. That'll be fun. Yeah, all right, let's will. get to the Booster Club. All right, let's get to some donations here. Let's go to our one and only $2 donation from Ryan Gade, the Philly man. Haven't won a single March Madness bet, fellas. Hashtag slump. How's y'all's brackets looking? <laughs> this this thing here? Guys, this, mine, mine, it doesn't look good. This is awful. It doesn't look good. I'm, I was... I, don't be su- surprised if Zelensky starts advocating on behalf of my bracket. Zelensky? Yeah. That's not good. This man needs money. Pays a man his money. bracket is terrible. It's awful. Let's go to Tristan Tussie. What's up, Tristan? He says, Tennessee messed up when they fired Phillip for winning eight games. Texas had the same problem. Mm. You can see that. All right, let's go to 
Chase Mills, I know what this is. $20 donation. Yeah, you better donate. I did. He gave me the third. Blaine knows what this is for. SMH, dunce cap for the day. God, I trusted you, Chase. What, what did he, which, which nerfy? It was the Reds nerfy. Can't remember who they played. They scored two in the first. Lost me $200. Because I had the over, I had over eight runs in the Phillies Reds. I hate my, uh, in a, five the, you won't, if you want it to hurt worse, to three, I think. if you want it to hurt worse, Chase, I bet all three single bets and also parlayed. Um, so you hit three nerfies. Out of the three. Yeah, and the, the one leg I missed to win $700. That was that one? That was Chase's bet. Mm. So thank you for the donation. Let's go to a $5 donation from uh, David's favorite humping. Badger, best woman game of all time, fellas. No lady ballers. I never would have been able to distract Kaylin Clark like like I did to David Cohn, a.k.a. Yeah. Mr. Un- Unclutch, a.k.a. <laughs> fat. What was you that, Badger? A.k.a. Humping. Fat. Fat. Let's go to a $2 donation from the house that Cody built. We love that house, Cody. It says, Blaine, what is your max bench? Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie to the people now. 275. No, I can put up 300. That's a key. That's cat. 315? No. Three wheels? Prove it. No. I no, we'll do not. it. Yeah, tomorrow on the show, Blaine will try and bench press 300 pounds. 300. Who's bringing the bench in here? Huh? So that's what's important? Yeah. If y'all get it in here, I'll throw it up. We just put that weight that David lifted on there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well. In the movie? That was real. I won the powerlifting count. Yeah, that was real. Reed Crane says, Jake, say roll tide on camera. No. No. Say it. Say it. No. Say it. No. This isn't Guantanamo. You're going to put the hoses on me? Stick the dogs on me? I Why is Bruce Pearl you, staring at me? But you're wrong. Mm, See? She's on the soundboard. Bruce board. Pearl said yeah. some things you guys might Oh, my like. gosh, Jake. Don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what did, yeah, let, let me get your, I want to get your opinion on this. Well, Bruce Kerr, Pearl came out and said, roll tide. Oh, that, what's your, what's y'all's thought? Play, play it. Do we have the, is this the clip right here? Play it. Roll tide. Roll tide. Roll um, tide. See, I don't know the context. Is of it the what context? I'll never say. say yeah. Roll tide. I have to see the full clip, but I really hope it's a, hey, let me tell you all the two words I'm never going to say together. And then he said that, or, oh no, look at that swell out of the ocean. And it was something like that. Cause I just, I don't Doesn't know. Doesn't seem like either of those. I don't know. But it's like I, a not, dumb a good time, not a good I time, Bob. 20 bucks, I can get you betting yeah. for the end of the day. It's not, yeah. it's not a good time, Bob. All right, let's go to Chris Walton. Chris, what's up? Says, doesn't matter how good the bullpen is for the Phillies when Bryce Harper is 0 for 11 so far. No, don't worry. Just going. wait till they play the Braves Season. after they yeah. win the wild card. Just wait. He'll hit 400 against the Braves. Him and uh, him and uh, Cassianos. Cassianos just closed his eyes. Oh, it's a world event. Home run. All right, let's go to Wilson. Don't come back, Wilson. 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 Does NC State and UConn making Final Four both men's and women's is impressive. Yeah. Not the first time that's happened, I'm nope. sure. But has the same school ever won both at the same time? I think UConn did. Yes. I think UConn did. With uh, uh, Khalid el and, and those guys. I think the men and the women won. Remember, the, people are like, start, not forgetting, but it's like becoming a huge part of the past even though UConn's made the Final Four. Like, Gino Ariyama was running this for a long time. Like, like he was dominated like there was no South Carolina it was him and Pat Summit and then obviously you know Pat passed away and Gino Ariemo was running shot running it over everyone 2004 UConn yep uh, the men's team won the national championship over Georgia Tech remember we were talking about Georgia Tech being really good right. at basketball for God, and the women's team beat Tennessee that year for the double I'm telling you like you remember when UConn was and not that they haven't since but they were beating people like in NCAA like in Elite Eights like 90 to 40 like with Brianna Stewart and them, like they were just murdering people. Diana Tarazi, just destroying them. Let's go to Con Air Ron. He says, Donovan's, uh, Billy Donovan has lost a lot of first round NCAA games. A lot of fans were upset. Then U- UF wins back to back titles. Remember, uh, be patient. Yeah. I hope it springs board to that. Like, I, I be patient. I've been patient. I've been pay- I was patient for 15 years waiting on armed basketball to make an NCAA tournament, it felt like. Like, again, patience is for doctors and therapists, all right? Like, once you've raised the standard, yeah, this isn't a one-off thing. And I hope this propels. I would love for Auburn to win the way that Billy Donovan won. And then, hell, go to the Magic. I don't care. Like, when it's like a Jim Harbaugh situation. Hey! 
we won it, we won it, I'll see you next year. Like, it just, uh, it, I, I, patience, I'm preaching patience, but accountability. Like, that's what I am. It's both. That should be on a slogan. All right, let's go to Bro Dan. He's, uh, what's up, Bro Dan? He says, is this a sporting show or a betting show? Ooh, it's both. Well, guess what, bro? It's both. It's both. Baby. Yeah. And that the best of two worlds. That's combined. a great that's a great segue to the bet segment. Dun, 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 dun. Brought to you by betonline.ag. God, my left leg is asleep. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. One and one yesterday, seven and one day for the boys. Pretty good. Coming off a, a month where we were basically up 20 units. Here's what I'm going with. I'm going uh Major League Baseball. Because there's really nothing else. We're gonna be honest. So give me the Astros and the Braves parlay money line. That's a plus 137. Come on, Frambler. Come on, Frambler. Let's go. And then give me the Padres. That's right, over the Cardinals. You Darvish, Miles Mikolas, and what sounds like the fight at the end of a comic book. Give me the Padres money line, minus 135. All right, 2-0 yesterday. I'm going to stick with the Braves playing the White Sox. Let's go Braves, Let's minus two and a half runs at plus 106. And then the first nerfy of the year, Blue Jays, Astros, no Pop runs that chair in the first there, inning, minus 110. All right, 2-0 yesterday. Let's keep the train rolling, fellas, the nerfy train. We're going <laughs> again to the Tigers and the Mets. We're going to go back-to-back day. That's a nerfy going off of minus 115. Then Cardinals and Padres, that is Hugh Darvish, a.k.a. Mr. Me So Sorry. Mm. That's a nerfy going off at minus 125. You have to have it. You have to have it. Um, you all notice <laughs> anything about the board today? Just how good that handwriting is? <laughs> Wow. Had a good day. The handwriting sucks, and you had a suck at soccer. On. Really had a good day right here. Real good day right here for uh, one of David's bets that uh, Blue Jays, Astros, Nerfy. Here's Don't erase it. Here's what, no, nah, I won't. They will. Finn will. Uh, Ace, he's going to go Yankees, Diamondbacks, Nerfy. It's plus money bet, boys. That's plus one and two eyes, which is plus 100. Then he's going to go Red Sox, money line at minus 162. Who on God's green earth are the Red Sox playing? where they're minus 162. Oh, you know, the the A's. Oh, the A's? Now it makes sense. By the way, did you see, um, so with the A's, you know, they're talking about building that new stadium in Las Vegas that won't be ready till 2028. So the city of Oakland went to the ownership of the A's and were like, hey, there's this three-year gap in between when the stadium's going to be ready for y'all to move to Vegas. Y'all want to sign a five-year deal with opt-outs built into it, because you're obviously probably not going to be there for five years. She'll be there for three and then move. Uh, so, it, so we can make this transition smoother, which I thought was smart. So the city has come to terms with them leaving, but they're That's saying what it don't like. leave so soon? It seems like they've decided they're getting divorced. Now they're just figuring out how long you're going to live in the house. Like how, how Who much, gets the airline miles? Who gets the airline miles? Throw a couple my way. Yeah. You know, Would if you, you want to be feeling generous. <laughs> yeah. Would you please shut up? <laughs> uh, all right. Blaine. Yeah. Let's get to the poll, buddy. Okay. K- K- Caitlin Clark. What? I don't want to hear that. You messed up four times during that. I didn't mess up four times. Yeah, I messed yeah. up one time. Yeah. I said depth yeah, instead yeah. of depth. I yeah. believe in you the second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try again. Hey, yeah. K- Caitlin, Caitlin Clark Golly, play in hey. the NBA. Shit! <laughs> Try it again. No! Can Caitlin Clark play in the NBA? No. Yes or no? No. no. It, this has got to be our closest one to 100. 97% no. 98%. There's no. Control in there. 90%. Who's what the 10%? Percent, man. Why is Caitlin Clark's family in here voting? I bet they'd say no. I saw her dad. He'd say no. <laughs> yeah, her dad was telling her to shut up talking yeah, to rep. I know exactly what that feels like. He'd yeah. say no in, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, he just, my dad used to use more expletives mm. in between it. So we appreciate everybody. Uh, hope to have a lot of calls tomorrow. Got a great show for you. Appreciate Chris Marler as well. Hey, remember, we're headed down to Florida. It's Thursday to Gainesville. Come hang out with us. Going to be screening Lady Ballers, having some Q&A, and just having a grand old time. Y'all know how we do it here. We appreciate you and, like the chances of women's basketball being as entertaining as men's, but also still being entertaining, going, going. Hey, gone. That was, that was clean. <laughs>